negative energy and unnecessary and uncontrolled fear of people in the heart. How to get rid of it from the heart? The, the fear and anxiety is, is the immensity of negative energy and again we talk about energy but to some people they think, why you don't talk in Islamic terms because energy actually is the highest level of reality of malakut. They're so used to kitten kindergarten level of teaching that actually the spiritual teaching and energy teachings and light teachings is the quantum reality of Islam. So energy is the easiest to learn and the hardest to achieve and that when you're sensitive to energy these anxieties, these difficulties, these fears are the overwhelming theme of what we've been talking about. If you notice that when you're asking a question during the talks if you write and take a life in which to write, write means not to write articles but to write the teachings of the shaykh. So when you write the reality is that you begin to understand, oh these were already answered before I asked them because everyone's coming with a signal and uh, not from their head but whatever is emanating from their heart, it's coming in to this field and in this field it's a Wi-Fi, already the heavens know the answer of what is in your heart and the emanation of, of the talk is directed from hearts to heart. Mm. So when they're clever trying to catch it, they're writing and they may be so focused in the writing that afterwards they can read what they wrote and that was the answer to all those questions. So Allah knows there's an overwhelming anxiety and fear everywhere. A fear of your money running out, fear of your dying and catching this thing, fear of every type of devil, fear of keeping your faith, yeah you name it, it the list will go on. So then the tariqah comes with the solution, we again watch somebody and very popular and everybody will start emailing, oh this one he's like that, he's like that. It's not, it's not important only to tell people one plus one, one plus one, one plus one but what's the answer? That he doesn't say, you've now political opinions and this juja majuj is this and this event is this and now they need money from here, they took the gold from here, they did okay, bada 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 bada. No benefit whatsoever, you're now part of the problem and you're not the solution. The solution is everybody has to be with Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> You're going to die in that understanding and die holding the feet of Prophet <laughs> so that you open your eyes within a flash, you're at the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad That's it, that's where the goal was to be. So then the solution for all of these then are they're coming with the teachings. Wash, keep your wudu, keep your salawats, keep your practices. Keep your head covered, keep your, your, your sunnah, keep your ring, keep everything that they're teaching is a shield and an armor for the believer. That do your practices, do the madad, we'll try to come with the step by step for the madad. Most basic for now just sit and meditate asking to visualize yourself in the presence of the shaykh. And that the shaykh's in front of you and that I'm nothing. And that please your light Sayyidi come into my heart. You're not going to the shaykh, you're not going to, to go into his station, that's very difficult to achieve. But say that in my low position, in my nothingness fill my heart with love. That Allah have consciousness because only conscious people who have taqwa, they have yaqeen over their senses can achieve that. Why Allah because we said before who are the taqwa? They have consciousness, who are muttaqeen? They're most conscious, from where? From their five senses are not working in hatid dunya. 
To have taqwa means to be conscious and, and presence of Allah It's actually a description of maqam al-ihsan, how you can be conscious. You're not conscious of your name, you're not conscious of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad but you want to be conscious of Allah You think it's that easy? So no then the consciousness and these verses of Allah will all point you to you should be making tafakkur. You should be making your contemplation because he'll teach you how to sit and, and build your taqwa. That I want the consciousness from my ears Ya Rabbi, then he'll teach sit and stop listening to everything. Play my Qur'an and play salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad so that your ears will have a taqwa. Give them a rest from this world and remind them of their paradise realities. Sit and close your eyes and give your eyes a taqwa and a consciousness that your eyes are looking at too much garbage all day long. Sit and close your eyes and then you begin to see all these images I've been seeing. Oh my gosh Ya Rabbi they've been destroying my heart these images. Then take a life in which you're continuously closing your eyes knowing there's nothing here Ya Rabbi. I'm in, in my grave, I want to be in that light, I want to be in Medina, the Munawara at Rosa Sharif. If you can't visualize that then I want to be at the Holy Kaaba, take a picture of the Kaaba and look I just want to be at the Holy Kaaba Ya Rabbi, dress me from these lines. So every sense of ours, I want my breath Ya Rabbi, I want my breath, I wasted my breath talking all day long to nonsense people. I want my breath to be in zikr of Allah then they teach you how to breathe. My touch. I don't want to touch anything, I don't want any simulation from my senses and I just want to feel the real touch from my soul. So when you're sitting and meditating you begin to sense energy and your sense of touch is becoming much, much sharper. It becomes a sense of touch from the soul, you feel energy, you feel when bad energy is coming, you feel when good energy is coming. So then this taqwa, this, this all your senses having a taqwa, that's then what Allah wants, itaqullah, mm. right? Have all your senses be trained and if they train, if you have consciousness of ears would you be sitting around with people listening to rap music all day long? Well it's not kunu ma sadaqeen, I wouldn't be like that. That's why the second part came to confirm, if you really want to taqwa, show me who you are, show, you, show me who your friends are, I tell you who you are. Right? This group you hang with, uh, these things that you do is affecting you. So when Allah is giving this is a formula, taqullah wa kunu ma sadaqeen. Get a consciousness, now this sadaqeen they will actually teach you how to be mutaqeen. How all of these, these senses have to have a consciousness of Allah So then when I clean my ears, I want to be with people who talk about zikr of Allah I don't want to he hear about these crazy things, I spend so much time trying to clean them. Why I want to sit now and keep doing that? When I clean my eyes, I don't want to be with people who, who's not healthy for my eyes, their thoughts, their whatever they're doing, they watch the inappropriate things. That's the second part for Allah If you really want to fix your eyes then you should be with sadiqeen, they don't do those things. Mm -hmm. They don't encourage those things. Then they teach you your breath, what you hear, what you see, how to touch, how to feel, how to feel these Divine lights. Then we understand that Allah was giving a isharat on how to reach to malakut. Have you seen those who made the ascension? We said every verse of Holy Qur'an that talks about the Kaaba is Allah's code because He wanted you to study hadith to understand His Qur'an. Wanted you to love Sayyidina Muhammad Qur'an is a lock, its key is Sayyidina Muhammad When you love somebody you say, I don't want to give you the secret myself. It's not showing an ihtiram to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If you don't study the hadith and don't connect your heart, don't wash and keep yourself to be clean, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem that these hadiths that these awliyaullah teach, I don't need to read the whole law book because I'm not trying to be a judge. I need to know the, the, the laws and the realities that you gave 
in, in relation to my reality and that's why the turuqs they teach specific hadiths that make you to reach to your reality. Know yourself, you know your Lord. Look at my life then I have to take my path of to know myself. So then these hadiths open the Qur'an. These hadiths that teach us to, to be with Sadiqeen that if Allah is talking about the Kaaba, He's talking about Kaaba, hadith comes in tells you that nothing in heaven, nothing on earth but the heart of the believer. Also Allah's Kaaba is, is really the heart, Allah's house is really the heart of the believer. Then you begin to understand the code, the key enters into Ayatul Kareem and unlocks it. When Allah talking about Kaaba, He's talking about our heart. When Allah is talking about taqwa, He's teaching about make your consciousness to be trained. Who going to train you about your senses? Sadiqeen. Mm -hmm. Some guy from a, who's a former rapper and now making YouTube, he's not going to teach you how to have taqwa. There's now everyone with a YouTube channel is teaching you meditation, breathe like this, you know like this. It's not that like that. But Allah gave the formula, find the sadiqeen whom they're truthful in their actions and their deeds. They'll teach you now how to have that reality, how to be dressed by that reality. The abundance of light is what we need to push away this negativity. What did we say that movie was last night? Pitch black. Pitch black. That he was surrounded by demons and they were going to kill and eat him. And the only thing that would stop them was light, yeah. they didn't like light. What Allah gave His example like that for? And that's exactly it. If you don't put a light in your heart, these demons are going to eat you alive. They ravage you, they, they attack you all day and night and wait until you have no faith, you, have, you feel empty within yourself of everything and then you go onto the other side of the scale in which you harm yourself and harm others. They'll empty you out, when that's not good enough they fill you with themselves. So then don't let the darkness overtake you. And this is the greatness of the reality of light, Allah's but one match is enough to light up an entire, entire dark room. So your hasanat never goes away, just do good deeds, good actions, go back to what is holy, what benefits your soul to reach to these lights inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi, when doing zikr and salawat I feel pressure and pulsating on the forehead, is this something bad? Also feel it when looking at the phone. No, there's all sorts of, of energies that remember we are like a bus filled with all sorts of negativity. You have all this you know garbage that people come to zikrs with and our daily life, all of us, no, no one is excluded. As soon as we enter the zikr there's the force of positive coming pushing out the force of negativity. So there's going to be many energy feelings, maybe headaches, maybe energies, maybe feeling fatigued and tired because there's a cleansing happening. So there's something normal, not normal, there's nothing normal in tariqah, it's whatever Allah wants for the servant. But zikrullah and salawat is blessed so it's always good. It's not the zikr that's causing the problem, it's other things that we do that are causing the problems. Then we have to go back with our muhasaba and begin to figure out when we meditate that, what did I do that you know brings a negative energy to me that it has such a difficult cleansing in the zikr. That one thing for the phone is yes, the phone is a tremendous source of negativity. So try to you know control your, your use of it and to make sure that you have wudu when you're dealing with it, that its energies are not pulling your energy. And when you're doing the actual zikr and the khatams and the salawats, try not to use the phone. Because all sorts of negative energies are coming, it will take your energy. So we'll, we'll try to put it down as much as possible, we only have to look at it just to make sure that the comments are being commented on and, and whatever you have to do. But uh. best not to have anything so that you have your own God-given energy. You don't have anything from mankind in interrupting and the jinn world interrupting your flow of energy, inshaAllah. 
Um, Sayyidi, my right knee hurts when sitting and trying to do tafakkur, at times the leg goes numb. If you're older and you have arthritis then, then you sit in a chair. If uh, going numb then you know you try to sit in a chair whatever you can do to accommodate yourself so that not to cause any damage to your body. But if people who are young and they just don't want to do it because they're lazy then better to push yourself and do that so that you don't get sleepy when you meditate. But if you're older and you start to get arthritis that's why you can't… I can't sit with my legs crossed on the floor. My knees will start to have extreme pain and it doesn't go away for days. So as you get older then you can't do some of the things you did when you were younger and Allah gave us a, a grant of a chair. It's a great ni'mah. <laughs> as you before somebody invented a chair you were continuously in, in back pain, leg pain. How much people suffered before, imagine Allah. with all the back pains people had to ride horses or everywhere. It didn't matter your back is broken, you're, you're, you're not in good health. Allah's ni'mat and is a rahmah, mm. blessing from Allah <clears throat> Sayyidi, if, if something, something is attached onto us, onto us and inside us, inside how do we make it go away or remove it? I've been in wudu for many days doing daily awrad and istighfar plus durood sharif, still don't go. Be patient, do the meditation, put the taweez, make your salawats, make the taweez on yourself and in your home. And as long as you're doing all your positive energies and energy practices, don't worry about the rest. When it's going to go, not go, that's not important. As long as you know that you can do those practices, you're not possessed. When someone is possessed, they, they can't even type for help. So that shaitan won't do anything, will ravage them and start to cut them. So you're not there, nobody's there. As long as they're reaching out, they're not like that. So everything else could be in your mind, could be what you think, could be mu'min beings around. So it's not important. The most important is that you're doing the zikr, you're doing your awrad, you're able to do the, the wudus, your salah, everything Allah asked from you. And at the same time then you're able to sit and to do your tafakkur. The tafakkur then brings a tremendous amount of, of energy and charity. Charity take away every type of calamity. We said when the person dies. The only thing when they go back to ask Allah Ya Rabbi let me go back. To finish my accounts to become salihin, that I'll let me go back make, make up my salah because it had the most effect on zaki, on their purification and their purity. Because by their future, their selfless act that they did what they did not for a person. They didn't give it because of the person, they gave it for Allah And Allah is the one who gives the servant his reward. So all of these are the formulas that Prophet gave to us. When we do all those then alhamdulillah don't worry about anything else. Everybody has a difficulty. Grand Shaykh was in, in Khalwa five years with a snake around his neck for the first what, 40 days. Allah want to test you, what's your focus? You're focusing on the problem or focusing on the solution? Mm -hmm. If you focus on the problem shaitan already got your attention. Mm -hmm. All day long you just, what's this problem, what's this problem? Don't worry about that. If that's not stopping you from your worshipness then just go headstrong into your worshipness. Do your thing, do your thing. So many times the shaykh may get attacked and have many difficulties. And he has to just be patient with his practices until Allah relieve him from that difficulty. But you don't focus on it and thinking, give me a salawat, make everything go away, it's McDonald's. You don't want fries and a coke with that too. Um, ah, Ajirid, what? Looking at me, ah, fries and a coke, that sounds good. <laughs> How to do the Allah zikr with the heart? It's difficult for me to concentrate in zikr with heart. Yeah, these are again, these are not easy stations. So it's not meant to be easy. But when you're trying to do the zikr of Allah in the heart, you'll, you'll realize that you don't have the ability to move from one Allah to the next without training. So you close your eyes and 
you, you can't push from one Allah to the next Allah to the next Allah to the next Allah, especially beginner stages, it doesn't come like that. So then the tasbih serves that purpose. So when you're meditating to do silent zikr, this actually becomes your thumb. So my, my thumb will act, my, my index finger will act like my tongue, yeah not my thumb, my tongue, <laughs> so, tongue, thumb. <laughs> so just trying to sit and say, I'm going to do Allah silently, you can't push to the next one. You're not able and trained on how to push the zikr through and push it, something sounds so primitive but it's very basic. So the tasbih comes and acts, this finger will act like my tongue. As I go like this, silently, so visualize I'm looking at my heart and I'm saying Allah silently to myself and my fingers will be weeks, months until you trained yourself and you move your zikr without it. But you train with your finger. And that's the khafi zikr. So the khafi zikr then will be training by your finger. So you move the finger and the zikr is now rotating and you're able to move to the next zikr and that's for all of them. You say, Hasbunallah, Rabbunallah, Hasbunallah, Rabbuna or Salawatan Prophet same thing. Even harder without the… so when you don't use the tasbih, very difficult for people to move the zikr in a khafi mode. So then you just use the test speech. There's actually quite a few questions regarding the daily awrad, quite a few people. Um, Salaam of Sayyidi, if I only do the first part of the awrad from the app daily, will I be connected to the Naqshbandi Wi-Fi? Um, as someone else also asking… Uh, yeah, everything is based on the minimum. minimum. Don't do more than the minimum. The minimum is the 1500, the Allah and the 300 salawat and 500 on, on Wednesday for the salawat, stick with the minimum. Mm. In life you say, I'm going to just do the minimum, that's my basic, I did my obligation, I'm on the Wi-Fi. Mm. You have more time, do 10,000 Allah, it's okay. But if you take for the, the higher level and you don't keep making it and then you, you don't finish the awrad, then we're going to have problems. And Time management like anything else in, in work, you know, did you want to take half a pay check every month, is that okay with you? If that's okay with you then no problem, do half the awrad. <laughs> so no, since you want the full paycheck from Allah then do the full awrad. Now it's a matter of time management. So the first part and the, and the short surahs we inshaAllah will all memorize that, that takes 15 minutes. Now it's uh, Fatiha. So the first part to the, to the du'a and the ida, 30 minutes. You can do that. Then we said with time management you say, okay now I have to do my Allahs and my salawats. On the way going to work I'll do my Allah and then I'll sit. And on my way coming home I'll do the salawats so that my awrad is finished for the day. If you can do it at one time, alhamdulillah. You're driving all the way to work and you can do your 1500 Allah. And that's why we have the 200 tasbih, because there's a speed in it than having the small one. When you have the small one, it's a lot of rotations and a lot of changings. You have to go to here to count a thousand, here's another thousand, here's another thousand. So before these 200 tasbihs they move very fast, so doing 1500s only seven times and one, seven around and one. one. You probably finish it in 10 minutes on the mm. drive in. It's not, it's not something hard. But then just time management, I'm going to do my Allah all the time at the beginning and I'll do my salawats on the way coming back but that's the, that's the, the awrad, the etiquette is done. Then I have my, my Surat al-Ikhlas and then I have all my other salawats that I want to make for the rest of the evening. 
I'll do that and do all my salawats all night long, watch TV, whatever you're doing keep making salawats, keep making salawats until the heart is in the durood al-sharif in thousands to, to build the energy and to build the connection with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Take away every type of nefarious activity and creature that coming around because truth and false they don't match. When saying Allahum Salli Salli Muhammad Salli Salli Muhammad Salli 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 Muhammad Salli Salli Muhammad Prophet Salli's ruhaniyat is going to be all around you, giving you back salams to the ifrit and run at that time. So that becomes the, the immense power for the ahbab and the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Every time we do these, these deeds that are dear to Allah imagine the immense power that they have. We're teaching everyone how much Allah loves Sayyidina Muhammad Then imagine then the servant who's continuously making salawat on Prophet just the mere barakah of that Allah shatters every type of difficulty around them as a result of that. This is, has immense, that's why you describe the immense re relationship and love that Allah has for the creation of Sayyidina Muhammad as soon as we enter into that center we're the benefit of this immense love. That's why all of these practices have so much power when it's done with that understanding. Because Allah has immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad um, As a sister in tariqah, uh, can we make madad on the lady saints? On the who? Lady saints. Sure. But don't go searching now for lady saints because that's less prevalent and that's the thing. If you don't have access to them and you don't have a, a channel in which to learn, that's… We have other talks about bouncing around to so many places. Today's episode I think was based on that, that uh, just bouncing around to different people and, and before you know it you're, you're neither here nor there. Ila Shaykh Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa ulama shaykhina fi tariqat nashbandiyyat al-aliyya wa sayir wa sadatina wa sadaqina al-fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.